congregants. <laughs> Good morning. I am so glad you're all here today on this Memorial Day weekend. We're going to start right off with singing, I Will Call Upon the Lord. Now this one is another one that is, um, you are all going to participate in a round. The choir's going to start, and then you'll sing with me. So um, they're on their own, all three of them. <laughs> but they know what they're doing. So we're going to sing the song all the way through first, and then um, we'll end it, and, and, then I'll, and then we're going to sing it again as a round. All right, hopefully we'll, we'll make this work. Oops. Ready? We're going to all sing together. Here's your introduction. Here we go. I will call on the Lord. is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. Repeat that. I will
everyone and welcome to this time of worship in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ may his grace and his peace be with you all and I would like to ask how many of you are veterans would you just raise your hand if you are a veteran thank you for your service And now, a show of hands again, how many of you have a family member, a relative, who is in active duty at this point? And thank you again for your service and for theirs. I'll give up, whoops, I have it here, I don't need this. Um, <laughs> I'll give a, a brief overview because I was asked why we're doing um, Holy Spirit songs today. Well, in the lectionary, um, today's scripture reading has something to do with the Holy Spirit. In fact, John's scripture and then the Acts scripture also doesn't name the Holy Spirit specifically, but that is what's going on. So that's why we're, we're, I'm leaning that way for today, and I'll explain more during the sermon. Um, but I did want to say, have a blessed Memorial Day as we remember those in active duty, our veterans, and also all of our loved ones, because Memorial Day has mushroomed out to mean that for all of us. Let us pray. O oh, merciful and loving God, through your grace you have called us to know you in Christ and to keep your word. Through the Holy Spirit, empower us to stand firm for you amid the ways of the world around us. In Christ we pray. Amen. join me in the call to worship. The Lord heard our plea and through Christ has sent us a helper, one who would be our guide and our reminder of all Christ taught us, one who would be present in all that we do or wherever we go, one who bears witness of the resurrection and eternity. The Holy Spirit has come that we might know the Lord and have life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And our first hymn is in the Methodist hymnal number 328, and we're going to sing it through two times.
seated. Our God is a loving God and listens with love. Let us therefore open our hearts and let God in as we pray together our confession. Lord, we often choose to face life alone and ignore your Holy Spirit. So often we read in the scriptures only what we want to read, and we forget your promises to be with us in every way when we will turn to you. Lord, you want to be with us so much in a living way. Help us to trust and open the doors of our hearts to your presence. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Know that God always goes with us. Know that God is always there to lead us, guide us, forgive us, comfort us, and encourage us. Know that God is always near to us, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 67. Do I have, can you hear me? Okay. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. And the second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 16, beginning at the ninth verse. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace. The following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
us pass the peace of Christ to one another. <laughs> peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> peace be with you, Marcia. <laughs> He's with you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> you this morning. Thank is you, and peace with you as well. <laughs> peace be with you. What a lovely cross you have. Thank you. Peace be with you. Thanks for being here. Oh, today. thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Thank peace you. be with you. <laughs> you. I love your voice. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Peace be with you. God, peace be with you. Good morning, Marianne. Peace Good morning. be with you. And with you. Thank you. Good morning, Linda. <laughs> How are you? Maybe I better head back that way, huh? <laughs> Thank you, and with you as well. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you, and thank you for your service. <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> Whoops. God's peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Now, yeah, where are we? Okay, now we don't sing the next one. You just play it. Yeah, we sing it. Oh, we do sing it? Okay. When we faithfully give of our time, our talents, and our treasures, can ministry continue. Let us show our faith is alive and well through our offerings this day. Let us receive this morning's offering.
God of justice and impartiality. You teach us to treat others without favoritism, whether rich or poor, male or female, believer or unbeliever. You call us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. May today's offering sow hope and help in your world that our faith may be found alive and well and that your love may touch the needy through our giving. With thanksgiving and hope, we pray. Amen. some joys and concerns today. The first joy is Ann Buschman celebrated her 84th birthday on Friday, 84 years young. <laughs> Are there any other birthdays to celebrate today? All right, then let's sing to Anne. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Another joy, Velma Crouch came home yesterday and is doing much better. Thank you for your prayers. Um, uh, prayer concern Fred Wood for Fred Wood, who is struggling with breathing and he's very tired. Um, and also prayers for Gloria Wood, who is having her fourth treatment on Thursday. Pray that it will shrink the swelling in her liver and spine. And these are both from Linda Wood, so keep them in your prayers. Um, a praise, Lisa's daughter's family has moved to the East Coast, so that's a joy we um, celebrate with her today. Are there any other joys or concerns today? Janet? Uh, I'm for birth, and one of our staff at the house um, heard um, other age, We continue prayers for Bert and uh, Janet's special staff, Heather. Any other joys? Pat? Just a quick announcement. The council did meet. Can you hear me? Yes. The council did meet this week and interviewed two prospective interim pastors. Uh, we met in executive session because it is personal information. But I can reveal that we will be deliberating and praying this week and meet again this week. Thank you, Pat. Um, if you couldn't hear her, she said that our leadership team has met this week and we interviewed two people who could be our potential interim pastors and we're going to meet again this week to hopefully either make a decision or pray on it some more. So we will let you know when we know that information as well. There are lots of things going on this week. Um, the office will be closed tomorrow because of Memorial Day. Uh, the Presbytery meeting in Seneca Falls is on today, Tuesday. There's coupon ministry on Tuesday. And there will be a mission and outreach meeting on Wednesday along with worship choir. Um, next Sunday will be the last Sunday of adult Sunday school, but not the last Sunday of 
Kids Connection. Um, Pastor Carol will be here with us next Sunday, and there will be communion and its food pantry Sunday. Right after service, the Girl Scouts will be having their bridging ceremony. Um, the baby bottle fundraiser is still going on. If you didn't get a baby bottle, they're in the windows around the church. Um, fill them with your change and bring them back on Father's Day. The scrap metal drive is still going on until the 27th, which is tomorrow. <laughs> so please make sure you bring your stuff to the parking lot um, out back. There's the dumpster out there. Again, a reminder that the birthdays and anniversaries calendar is in the back. If you would like to write those, your birthday or anniversary down, we would love to celebrate with you. And the Strawberry Social will be Thursday, June 20th. And if you would like to help out in any way, there is still some slots open for that. Um, there's a sign-up sheet out in the fellowship hall if you'd want to check that out. And there will be um, a celebration of dads and grads on June 16th on Father's Day. We will be honoring our dads and our one graduate this year, Devin. So please join us for that special day. Are there any other joys, concerns, announcements? Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just wanted to let you all know that the uh, Canal Town Corral, which I accompany, and uh, Barb Mayer sings in, will be performing next Sunday, um, the 2nd, uh, at 4 o'clock at the VFW in Palmyra. So if you're free and uh, want to listen to some of our favorites, it's uh, 4 o'clock, VFW in Palmyra. Hope you can come. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say congratulations to all of you, to each and every one. I think you are doing a wonderful job of keeping your church community going. I mean, you are fulfilling God's desire and will for you, for this community. We all are in ministry, and you have taken over as it should be, and you are keeping yourselves going as a community of faith. So I just wanted to call attention to that. I think you're doing a great job. Ta-da! <laughs> Lord, we often fail to bring our concerns before you in prayer. We all but deny your power simply because we will not pray and let your will be done in our lives. Help us to open our hearts with courage to your presence so that the whole world might know that your love and grace are real. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel reading is from the gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the 40 days of Easter are coming to a close. Next Sunday is Ascension Sunday. It's the day that the Lord returns back to his glory, back to heaven, back to the Father. And then two weeks from today, we will celebrate the giving in a very powerful way, the Holy Spirit. But this Sunday takes us back, back before the resurrection, back even before the crucifixion, to the night before, to the Last Supper. Now John is the only gospel writer who has Jesus speaking these long discourses. It's like he's really preaching and teaching his apostles for the last time before he goes to the cross, before he finishes his work that he was sent to do. And he knows he's leaving, and he's trying to prepare the way. He doesn't want to leave them abandoned and bereft. He's been trying to ease them into this idea, and they haven't really been getting it. And I don't think we would have gotten it either. You know, we have the advantage of reading the scriptures every year and hearing it over and over. It's ingrained in us. We kind of know the end of the story, at least till this point in time. We know more than they knew when they were hearing this. Now imagine if a family member is preparing to leave and they're trying to tell you that they're going to be leaving. You don't want to hear that. So they were upset. I have to believe they were upset. They didn't want to believe it. And Jesus, on this night, on that first Holy Thursday, the night of the Last Supper, is really trying to give them encouragement. He tells them about him and his father and how close they are, that they really are one. And we know that often throughout John, Jesus keeps saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. The father and I are one. And in this particular scripture, he says, everything you hear from me is not my own. These aren't my words. They're the words of the father who sent me. And then he tells them, I'm leaving, but I'm not going to leave you empty-handed. I'm not going to leave you alone. I will send someone, the counselor, the advocate. It depends on which translation we read. Sometimes he's called the paraclete, the comforter, the helper, the friend. Whatever words we use, they all apply. Jesus did not want to leave them alone. And he wanted to ensure that the ministry that he started, that big movement that would change the world, would continue. And he knew that this small band of 12, soon to be down to 11, he wanted them to know that he expected them to carry on, but he also knew they could not do that under their own power. Even Jesus did not do it under his own power. He often went away to pray because he needed the power of God within him and all around him. We know that name by the Holy Spirit. It is God within us, God around us, God leading us when we need leading. God comforting us when we need comfort. They needed comfort that night. And on this Memorial Day, we may need comfort too as we remember our loved ones whom we have lost in this life. And yet we know because of Jesus' death and resurrection that we will see them again. That is a promise. And he told his disciples that night, the world may not see me anymore, but you will see me. 
Because I live, you too will live. And again, he says, If you love me, you will be glad that I am going. Because when I go, then I can send you the Helper, the Holy Spirit. He was ensuring that he would be with them always, even after he physically left this life. We are among all the generations who came after their generation that did not see Jesus face to face. But we know him. We love him. We experience him. We feel him. We talk to him. We are guided and directed by him. That is his Holy Spirit with us. And he wanted to tell them ahead of time that he was going to gift them this great blessing. Because we know that when Pentecost came and when we celebrated in two weeks, that the Spirit comes in a terrifyingly powerful way. And the world was changed forever. They were changed forever. How about us? How about you and me? Have we been changed forever because of knowing the Holy Spirit, God within us, God all around us? In the Acts scripture, it is subtle. And yet, how does Paul come to go to Macedonia? He has a vision that comes from God. That's the Holy Spirit at work within him, leading and guiding and sending him to where God wants him to be next. And he meets up with Lydia. She was a woman of prominence. She had a career, which wasn't very... Um, what do I want to say? It wasn't the norm back in her day. But she was a dealer in purple cloth, the color of royalty. So she must have made a good living. And it sounds like she was a leader in her home church or her home community of faith at the time. And then we're told that she and all of her household were baptized baptized into the Christian faith, faith in Jesus, the Savior, the Redeemer. And then she says to Paul, if you have found my faith sturdy and strong, then you come and stay with me. And she impresses upon them to do so. That was the Holy Spirit at work within Lydia and her family before they ever met Paul, maybe before they ever heard about Jesus. The Holy Spirit had prepared her heart and her soul to receive that news. And what happens? Instantly, she comes to faith in Christ. The Holy Spirit is always with us. Isn't that what an advocate does? They're always there. We can depend on them. We can rely on them. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is our counselor. Sometimes we need to talk. We need to pour out our hearts to God. We don't know what to do about something. And maybe we find the answer when we first express our need and then we pray and meditate and are quiet so that we can hear what God will say. What is God's answer? Maybe I get it. Maybe I don't hear anything and I wonder what's going on. But I'm told to keep praying. Pray without ceasing. Keep giving myself over daily, minute by minute, to the work of God, to the will of God. And eventually, 
I get the answer and I know what I'm supposed to do. Maybe I'm hurting and that counselor becomes like a grief counselor or my best friend and all I need is just to be held. I need to be held, I need to cry, I need to dry my tears and just rest on that shoulder in those arms. Whatever we need and even what we think we don't need, the Holy Spirit provides. He teaches, he tests, he tries us so that we will be our best selves. And we know from the lives of the apostles that following Christ, doing God's will, we know from our own lives, I'm sure, that following God's will is not always easy, but it is always uplifting and rewarding, and we grow and we become all that God designed us to be. We don't give, I don't think, enough attention to the work of the Holy Spirit. We don't identify the Spirit as the Spirit. And maybe in the big scheme, maybe it doesn't really matter. We pray to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I know in my own prayer life, sometimes I call God, God. Sometimes I call God, Lord. Sometimes I name Jesus. Sometimes I name Father. Sometimes I call Daddy. Sometimes I call my best friend. Sometimes I call Spirit, Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer. We have all these terms. And really, no matter what we call this being, he is our Lord, our Savior, our guide, our healer, our hope, our life. He sent his spirit to be with us always. Otherwise, we wouldn't know God, not in the way that we can and hopefully do right to the core of our heart. Jesus said, when you love me and you love the Father, we will come and we will make our home in your heart. Again, that is not even something we can do on our own. It takes the Holy Spirit's work within us, just like with Lydia, to prepare us to get our hearts and our minds and our spirits ready to receive. So if you haven't started that journey with the Spirit, what are you waiting for? Because all that is ahead of you is joy. Joy and that peace that surpasses understanding peace that is so palpable, we can touch it. We feel it. Even when our brains are saying, this makes absolutely no sense that I should be so serene within my heart, within my being. We have that peace. And Jesus promised that in this same peace. My peace I leave you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And every time I read that scripture, I say, thank you, God, because the world's peace is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It is not worth a thing. God's peace is everlasting. God's peace will comfort us and keep us going through anything and everything. And that's why he promised and said, do not let your hearts be troubled. I give you my peace. I give you my life. I give you my spirit so that I can be with you always to sustain you, encourage you, teach you, love you. Be with the spirit. And be prepared as we anticipate 
you know, the high of Pentecost. Amen. Let us pray and affirm our faith. Together, as the body of Christ, we affirm and declare Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, the Word of God in flesh, the love of God personified, the mercy of God in action, the power of God at work. In his extraordinary incarnation, life, death, and resurrection, Jesus lived in perfect obedience, showing us who God God is and what God is like in every attitude, word, and deed. Therefore, we seek to imitate Christ by yielding to his love that we might be transformed and renewed in his likeness. Amen. Our next hymn is number 331. not a dead end. It is a surprising journey to God. Say yes to life. Laugh each day and unwind the threads of the world. In God's love. Amen.